G'day everyone, my name is Baggles and welcome to my very first collectible minifigure series showcase on Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now this series will feature 16 minifigures and we'll go into how they were made, design choices, problems along the way and some more behind the scenes. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. Now let's dive into it right now. So to kick this series off, I started off with Clone Trooper 99. Now he wasn't the first one I made, but I started off with him because he was probably the most simplest one in the series. So I started off the face, tried to base off Angry Clone, while also bringing in my own unique flair, making it more wrinkles, the eye sag, you know, bringing in the smile of that lovable personality that we all love. And then I moved on to the arms, which were quite simple. It was just a band, and then it was just the simple lines. Pretty easy, but you know, it really brings out the character. Then I moved on to the legs, which I should have made shorter. Now I see that now after some people pointed out on Instagram, but it, it works for the most part. And then lastly, the torso, for the most part is simple, but I really like how the stomach sags over the belt. It's just the fine little details. So I hope you enjoy him, and now we'll move on to number two. Now for number two, this is probably one of my favourite minifigures in the series. This is Ahsoka Tano from the Zygerian arc. Now if you know me, I love Ahsoka Tano, so I've made quite a few over the years, but this one is probably one of my favourite ones. Now I'll go into why. So if we start at the top, you'll notice I've got some custom moulded pieces. Now you may be thinking, how do you make those? What I did is I grabbed some plastic texture and then used human saturation, polygon lasso tools, blending modes, levels, brightness and contrast and so much more just to get the detail right and it was tedious to say the least but in the end product it looks pretty good I must say. I also had to remove the headband around her montrals using clone stamp tool. Now onto the arms. The arms are quite simple but like most Ahsoka minifigures you do need them just to bring up that quality of the minifigure so that was definitely a must. Now if you look at her torso, it's quite simple for the most part, except when you look at that gold band. I put in a few little details that you can't really see on the Instagram post because Instagram butchers quality, but if you look in there, I did a few highlights and shadows just to simulate the gold texture. Now moving on to the legs, they're pretty simple for the most part. You got the gold belt, which is the same technique as the gold bar around her torso. And then you've got a few gems, which I'm not entirely proud of, but they do their job for the most part. Then I did double molded boots, which I thought were a pretty cool idea. And then we get to the dress. And the dress, for the most part, was pretty easy. Like, the outline, easy. But then you get to the pattern, and you're like, oh, it looks pretty simple. It was tedious, to say the least. That took me forever going back and forth on reference, but for the end product, I am super happy with it. And I hope you enjoyed number two, which was a Sokotano. Number three is the Zygerian Queen. Now you may remember her from the Zygerian arc also. And starting from the top, we use the same technique with Ahsoka's headband with hers. Um, that turned out pretty well too. I just did a bit of more of that gold highlights and shadows that I did with Ahsoka's belt. The ears, uh, not too proud of those, but I'd imagine they would be attached to the hair and the band and that'd come off with one piece. Moving on to the neck, um, I did a bit of a gold bar with little lines going through and I noticed with the collectible minifigure series they're starting to do something like that so it is possible now. Moving on to the torso, the top part's pretty simple, it's just lines upon lines upon lines upon lines. Get to the belt, it's got a pretty intricate pattern which was somewhat tedious but you know it wasn't as hard as Ahsoka. Moving on to the arms, they're pretty simple for the most part, it's just lines and then colour and then lines. Not too much to say about that. Moving on to the waist cape, what I did is I grabbed an image off Google Images, then used hue and saturation, brightness and contrast to get that 3D look, which didn't really turn out too well for the front bit of the cape, but you live and you learn. Um, there's a bit of a pattern there, which was a bit of time consuming, but wasn't too hard. Then lastly, the legs, you just got a bit of shin guards at the bottom and a few gold boots, and there's a little bit of detail you can see in the gold, and that's really her. Not my favourite one, but definitely one that I really wanted to do because she really struck me as a really cool character in the show. 
So next up is Nala C, a Kaminoan from the Lost Missions in the Order 66 arc. Now if you're like me, you're probably wondering, hey Lego, where is our Kaminoan minifigures? And <laughs> they just haven't made one yet and this baffles me. So I definitely had to make one for this series. And I was pretty uh, overwhelmed by it at first, so I started off the tour, so you know, to get the work done. Then moved on to the arms. Pretty simple, it's just paths and hue and saturation and getting different references on minifigures just to get it all right. And then I moved on to the legs and I distorted the middle part of the legs but not the feet and then moved the feet down and connected all that up. And then got some black minifigure legs because they got different texture if you actually look at it closely. And then I think I used Tarkin's legs for the Kaminoan of all things. And then we get to the head. And oh my gosh, this took me forever. I was using every tool under the sun to make this look right, like paths and hue and saturation, brightness and contrast, polygon lasso tool, um, blending modes, you name it, I was using it. And it took me forever to do this. Probably the one that I spent the most time on, just trying to get that right. And I even used, got what it's called, it's like a cylinder piece for the head and the neck part where the um, shoulder plate thing comes on. Yeah, I even connected some of that up because it was just like, I need some good references to make this look realistic. So that's also a good thing is use realistic textures and all that sort of stuff to sell that they actually look real. I'm pretty proud of this one. It's probably one of my favorites, probably maybe even my favorite of the series, just because I want a Kaminoan in minifigure form. Moving on to number 5, I decided to make Master Tipla. Now if you remember her, she was killed at the start of the Order 66 arc and her design just stuck in my head for so long that I was like, I have to make her. So I started off with the torso and the legs because you know, easiest thing to do. Same tools as I've used previously. Arms, didn't have to do any texture on there except for the wrists. I decided to put in a lighter creamy colour in there, similar to what is on the reference. And then I moved on to the head and... That was pretty simple. And then you get to her tentacle things on her head and oh my gosh, these took forever to do, but not entirely proud of it, but it it doesn't look as realistic as the others do, but I feel like it could work in Lego form that you just do a rubbery kind of thing like Kit Fisto or something like that. The headband thing is made the same way as the Sokers and the Zygerian Queens headbands and stuff have been made. Not much to say about this minifigure except that those tentacle things took forever to do. And they look alright for the most part. I think I could have done something more to them, maybe merge them like how plastic merges. That could have been a step forward, but I think at this point I was just over this minifigure. And because I did tip la, of course I'm going to do a sister tip play. And for the most part, she was quite simple. Her torso and legs were just inverts of Tiplars, so it was just a simple color change. Then you move to the head, and I tried to use this um, Islander Hawaiian piece for her head, but that didn't end up working, so I had to try and make my own thing. Didn't turn out too well as I really liked it too. Her tentacle sort of things, I don't know what you call them, but they turned out pretty well for the most part. Don't look as Lego as they should, but I feel like they get the job done and they look much better than Tiplars. So, for number 7 was originally meant to be Pre Vizsla from Season 5, but I had just seen the Star Wars Battlefront 2 trailer with the Clone Commandos and that kind of swayed my choice. So starting with a Phase 1 helmet as the base, I used a Polygon Lasso tool accordingly to make the Delta Squad helmets. And then for the visors, I got three layers of blue, a dark blue, a medium blue, and a cyan kind of blue. And then used a custom eraser tool to make that fiery effect. And then to sell the effect even more, I used blending modes to create highlights throughout the whole helmet, just you know, sell that effect that it is actually real. Now moving on to the body, this was mainly inspired by many clone customizers and I kind of brought in my own flair too. So starting off the arms, you got the obvious shoulder pads and you got what you would normally expect on a clone, you know, you got all your markings and everything. I tried to also be inspired by Lego's clones, but I'll also, you know, bring in all that detail that they normally don't. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. 
Now, because I started making Delta Squad minifigures, I had to swap out number 8, which was originally Bo-Katan, for Sev. Now, you'll notice with Sev that it was just a matter of colour changes compared to Fixer, so it was quite easy for that part. You know, maybe a few line colour changes due to, like, colours that were there. But it was pretty simple for the most part. You'll notice that he doesn't have his handprint because that was based off his Clone Wars Season 3 appearance. The only thing I'm not happy about this minifigure is the red on the helmet. The highlights uh, just don't work there, but it's a pretty good minifigure for the most part. Now for number 9, it's probably my favourite in all the Delta Squad line is Scorch. I just had to bring in a few extra lines in the arms and it was just a matter of lots of different colour changes. Worked a lot better than Sev and he was originally meant to be Savage Opress, but obviously I had to swap him out for the Delta Squad minifigures. And last but not least, at number 10 for the Delta Squad minifigures was Boss, and by far it was the easiest one. It was just the simple little arm lines at the bottom for the orange, and then just bringing all the orange in and the few dots. Not too much to say here, but he looks pretty good for the most part, except again at the helmet where that just reflection does not work at all. Coming in at number 11 is Asajj Ventress, based off her appearance in Dark Disciple, which is an amazing book by the way. If we start at the top, her hair is a combination of Thrawn's and Force Awaken Han Solo. So on the left hand side it's Han Solo's and Thrawn's is on the right hand side. I combined them both using a polygon lasso tool with a feather of about 30 or 50 pixels, something like that. Her head was majorly based off the 2015 minifigure which debuted in Anakin's Jedi Starfighter set. So I'm pretty proud of it, I'd made a few adjustments of my own and for the most part it looks pretty good. For the arms it's quite simple, it's just got a shoulder plate with the snake on it and just some cloth wrapping around her elbows. I also changed the colour of her wrist to black as that matches the reference material better. Now moving on to the torso, it's quite simple for the most part, the belt is quite stock standard, nothing really to say about there. The side plates were done by bringing the saturation all the way down then adding another layer of blue and using my custom eraser to create like a painted wear tear effect. And then the pattern in the fabric was done by creating a one bit of the pattern and then just duplicating it and turning all that to a blending mode of soft light. Now moving on to the legs, they were a combination of two legs, black legs which I believe were Agent Callus's and Tarkin's legs for the fabric and knee plates and everything like that. I hope to get this minifigure printed one day, maybe after my Season 7 Ahsoka and Maul. Now on to number 12. Now on to my favourite minifigure. Number 12 is Duchess Satine in her political uniform. And oh my gosh, this minifigure is so complex, I didn't even know if I was going to finish it or not. So let's start off at the bottom. So this dress piece, you may recognise it from Queen Amidala's dress piece, except with that, the little bulb things that you see in The Phantom Menace. So I've got a bit of curtain floral pattern going on throughout the whole thing that you'll notice a bit more in-depth detail there, except if you're on Instagram, of course. And at the bottom, you can see a bit of a reflection, which, you know, simulates more that it's plastic, it's real, it's realistic. Moving up, the dress piece is symmetrical and... Pretty proud of it for the most part, and then if you go to the belt piece, that's, that was quite detailed too. I was going to add more detail in the middle part, because there was like a little really intricate design there, but that was just going way too far, even for me. And then moving on to the arm pieces, they're pretty simple for the most part, it's just purple lines, and then you got the little fabric lines going everywhere else. Not too much to show there. But for the headpiece, oh my gosh, using that same plastic texture, that I used for Ahsoka and everyone else. I used that once again, but with more refined skills since I knew what I was doing. Using shadows, highlights, and everything else in between. Kind of worked out for the most part how to do this really well. For the earrings, I used a crystal texture. And then for the top little turquoise parts, I used more curtain texture. And same with the blue parts as well. And I am so proud of how this one turned out. I didn't even think it would turn out this good. So there's number 12 for you. My second minifigure I created for this series is the daughter from the Mortis arc. 
If you notice at the bottom, I use the same dress piece that I used with Satine. And if you look at the top with the molded pieces, it was quite an early development trying to learn how to do that. So this is kind of my first time doing the molded pieces. If we start at the bottom, it's got quite an intricate dress design. And then moving up, it's pretty much the same. There's lots of little details going out through the whole thing. Not as detailed as Satine though, I should add. Moving on to the arms, they're probably not my most proudest thing for the most part. I feel like I should have added more texture into them or something. It just feels like it's more desaturated or bland, not enough shadows. And then we move on to the hair. I'm not entirely happy with the hair, but it's probably the best I could have done at the time. It's a combination of Agent 13's hair and She-Hulk's hair, I think. And then the earrings and whatnot, I can't even remember what I made those out of. Might have been something from Queen Amidala again. I think it was some of her earrings or something like that. And then the mold of piece was done with that same plastic texture, though not to the same standard as something like Satine, which I'm kind of biased towards now. Number 14 is the father. Now this minifigure was inspired by a Lego Custom 00 version of the father, and he literally inspired me to start doing all this sort of stuff. So shout out to him, amazing guy. Go check him out on Instagram. But, let's move on to the minifigure. If we start off at the top, you notice that the hat is kind of like Gandalf's, and that was because it was actually modelled from Gandalf, suggested by LEGO Custom 00. So I used that, and then brought in some shadows and texture and extrusions just to bring it out and then bring it down so then it could attach to the face. And then the beard was done with the same plastic texture I've done for everything else. And I'd imagine that would be the same moulded piece that you could just take on and off at once. And then the face is pretty pretty good. I'm not too happy with it in the middle for the most part. I think it's just something to do with the lighting that seems a bit off. But moving down to the torso, that necklace thing, oh my gosh, that was quite intricate. Yeah, I procrastinated doing that for a while actually. Though it doesn't seem too hard, I don't know why I procrastinated from doing it. But then you got this um, kind of like spiky chest plate thing. And that that's pretty cool. I like how that turned out. The arms are pretty simple for the most part. And then you come down to the bottom of the torso and it turns into this dress sort of thing, which is a halfway point between a sateen dress and like a cloth fabric. And I think it'll be kind of like a mini mouse dress. And I really love how the printing just works on that and the texture and how it light shines off of some of the lines. It looks great. Underneath you've got normal legs so you can pose that you can move the minifigure so you're not restricted like sateen or like those new dress pieces or anything like that. So you can still you maybe use them for stop motion animation, maybe uh, photos, whatever. So I hope you enjoyed the father. The second to last minifigure is the sun, of course. So if we start from the legs, I should have made these lines in light grey but for some reason I did them in black which, you know, is okay, but you can barely see the lines, except for the red, which the red looks superb, by the way. Uh, he's just got his cloth pieces and his feet, and then you move up to the torso, which is the highlight of this minifigure, I think. And that's pretty simple with the chest plate and his underneath garments and everything like that. Moving on to the arms, they should have been in light grey too, but it's just shoulder plates, which you can barely see, but they are there. And then he's got this neck piece, which isn't really my best work, but it isn't too bad for the most part. It's definitely nothing compared to Satine or the Father or something like that. And his head is based off of Thrawns and then I've just added the red markings and changed the expression in the face. Should have made him smiling, but he's frowning. So that's the sun. So the final minifigure, or should I say minifigures, are the Force Priestesses. These were the first minifigures I made for this series, yet the custom molded heads still hold up in quality compared to my other minifigures. I remember watching the arc they first appeared in and fell in love with their design immediately. Let's start with the legs. They are double molded with black on the top and glow in the dark on the bottom. Metallic lines on their robes go all the way up to their torso. The chest plate includes some silver texture and includes some neck print before it changes into the molded head. Everything on the face is printed except for the black indents around their eyes. There are five different faces, joy, anger, serenity, confusion, and sadness. So that is my collectible minifigure series based on the Clone Wars. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Let me know who your favourites were, or who you would like to see in the future in the comments below. I should also mention Bounty 2 is not far away, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day.